How did you do? How? You still do it? Yeah. Oh my God! So many bars. Why are you waiting till after the club? <laughs> oh, how did I get my oh, 75, 75 opportunity? I was a mobile DJ. That's what happened. Mobile DJ used to buy turntables, amplifiers. Uh, used to go around in a truck and go to park. You started on your own club. Yeah. Well, no. Before the club in, in New York or in Brooklyn, you uh, you start uh, mobile. You know what I mean? You start small. Mm. That's that's how we do it over there. You know, as you get more money, and then you get to the club. But before the club, everyone's mobile. They start, you know, with the stuff in their house, then they get better equipment, then they uh, they rent a truck, and then they go to to uh, the park. They go to different places and and play Way around. Yeah. Okay. Your success started around with one with Kiss FM the program. How program? Boost your career as a DJ. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, one more time again. Uh, I, I remember. You said fan boost your career as a DJ. How do you think that? Happened? How did that happen? Yeah. It happened uh, by luck. It happened because um, uh, a new uh, radio station was being uh, formulated, and I met uh, the famous uh, producer um, Chef Pettibone. Uh, who, who worked on Madonna and a lot of uh, Sal Soul projects. I met him and uh, I just gave him one of like, today it'd be a CD, but I gave him a cassette back then. And um, he was going to be the manager of a new radio station and someone uh, did not produce their, their show. So he asked me at the last minute, within one day, can I come up with four hours worth of music? and that's how I got on the radio, it was by, by luck. By luck. Yeah. Okay. You worked, as you just said, uh, with the top stars of all the top names. How did you survive that experience? Hmm. Um, probably by staying real, staying myself, you know. Uh, I don't get caught up in the, uh, the glitz and the glamour. I don't get caught up in the the ego of the music business. Yeah. I just, you know, like to uh, keep responsibility, you know. So you don't, you don't look at the star? You don't look at yourself? No, absolutely not. I, I'm not a star because I, I don't sing, I don't play an instrument. I mean, those are the real stars to me, you know. Um, producers, yes, they can be stars, but the real stars are the people with the talent. You know, we are managers. Well, in life, we have um, different families, I would say. You have your religious family, you have your personal family, you have your sports family, you have your college family, you know. Well, music to me is another outlet or another family that you can depend on, you know, that it can be good, bad, whatever, but it's another outlet that, you know, is very important. You know, if you have no other family left, Music is good you can count on music, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Like you're a reference for a lot of DJs. What are your main influences? DJ influences? Yeah. Oh God. So <laughs> many. Oh. Oh no. You don't like well, the question. Well, that's a good question. Um, I was fortunate, I would say, to uh, grow up in a time or a period or a decade where. Um, there was so much talent in bands or producers or whatever before the electronic age, okay, that my influences came from all over the place, from all over the world, whether it was jazz, whether it was Latin, whether, whatever. Excuse me, it was a, it was a different time. And um, I'm very fortunate to experience a little bit of that. That's, that's where I got my influences from everywhere because one thing I will say is that that's different from now. When you had bands before, a lot of times uh, if you were talented enough, the, the record business would give each person in a band or whatever a chance to have their own album. You understand? For instance, uh, who can I use an ex as an example? Let's say um, Rufus and Chaka Khan, okay, yeah. something like that. So then Rufus was by herself or 
Prince, you know, and he had different people, you know, who played with him. Well, if you were good enough and you were a bass player, you know, Stanley Clark, you know, or you were uh, a flute player, you know, whatever, you got your chance. Ralph McDonald was a, a conga player, you understand what I mean? So, yeah. back then, everyone had their own album or two, and I was influenced by all the albums at that time, so, you know, it was very good, you know, it wasn't just one producer as it is now. Right. It's funny we talk amongst our group of people all the time and um, what I equal what we do is it's the same as religion. So because you are a Catholic, okay, and there are not that many people coming to church doesn't mean you change your attitude about the religion. You just keep going on until more people come. You understand what I mean? So, you know, it's good to know what's going on. For instance, if there is techno, hard house, uh, hip hop, whatever, that there are other things going on, it's good to be educated. But it doesn't mean you have to switch. It doesn't mean you have to sell out. It doesn't mean, like, because there's nobody in church, now I'm going to be a Muslim or I'm going to be something else. You stick with what you were with until it comes back again. You know, you get more people. You know, sometimes it goes in waves, you know. Every Sunday is not filled up with 2,000 people, you know. And one time, you know, it will come back because you don't know who the young people are in the crowd. Yeah, because it, I, I assume, I could be wrong, but I assume we were all young. We all got into the club we weren't supposed to get into when we were 15, 16, and they would allow us in. And what are you doing? Where's your ID? You know, whatever. But nobody knew who we were at that time you know and they had their own group or family of cliques and we weren't a part of them well now now our clique or our age of people okay they have families they don't go out as much you know they're into big business they have their own record labels they have their own this so it's not the same people anymore but as long as people are smart enough to look for the younger people, the 10 or 20 that is by the speaker or by the booth and they're just humble by themselves, that's the new generation of people. So to say like, oh, well, they don't like soulful music anymore, they don't like vocals, they don't like this, you don't know that for sure. You don't know until you do some research to find out who is really out there or else you wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be here because we weren't in the majority before. Mm -hmm. We weren't supposed to be in the club, <laughs> correct? Yeah. I mean, yeah. once you get past, you know, trying to pick up uh, women or men or pick up, you know, uh, you know, to you, once you get past the, the normal things in a club, then, mm -hmm. you know, there are people who are very interested, who want to be the light man, who want to be the teacher, who want to be secure, yeah. who want to be whatever. And, Someone needs to do their job and find out who they are. That's the thing. That's what I believe. For me, I take over from where the person before me was playing and I look and see what's going on with people, you know, on the floor. So I know, or I believe in, in certain things. If a club is not crowded, okay, then you have to do your best to try to keep people on the dance floor, of course, um, and you see what works and what doesn't work until you get their attention and then, you and then they trust you. Mm -hmm. But you have so many other influences that go on in a club, you know, be it the bar, the beautiful people, the lights, whatever, there's so many distractions, I should say, more so than the music, that you have to try to equal that or get their attention to you. You're not just part two or three or four. So that's where the work is. That's where the experience comes in. That's where the versatility comes in. I mean, you know, you, that's where you can tell whether somebody is prepared and they know what they're doing or not. Yeah. You understand? I mean, we're prepared, or I was prepared in the sense that I can go in eight different ways, but because I had no idea what the crowd was going to be, you know, I had to, well, the only the only information I had was the person that was playing before me and what yeah. I saw. So until I feel confident, they feel confident, you understand, yeah. then I can gradually 
sort of pull them into what, you know, I would normally play. But until then, you know, yeah. they are paying to hear me. I don't know, they yeah. spend 20, 50, I don't know, $100 to come in, you know. Yeah. And it, it's my job to entertain. We're in the entertainment yeah. business, you know. I'm not going to fight them and go, oh, I'm Tony Young because I don't give a shit. You, you have to like this. I'm going <laughs> to stick it down your throat, you know what I mean? And like, too bad, go home. You do that, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah. This arrogance, yeah. arrogance to me doesn't bring bring money. Really. Yeah. It doesn't bring business. I'm sorry, yeah. it's the wrong word. You know, so um, that's that's where the work is to me. You know, so uh, again, maybe it wasn't as cra uh, packed and crowded tonight as other nights. Yeah. Okay, but the fact that if they stayed for three hours and four hours and they weren't used to the type of program I played, yeah. then that's a plus. They could have left after three records. They could have yeah. left in 15 minutes and said, I don't like this guy, or yeah. give me my money back. You know, yeah. so they, you know, and that's what I would hope we would pass on to the other generation of DJs or whatever. I don't want to sound old, and I don't want to sound like, you know, whatever, but, you know, to be able to pick up to have a, a sense of when to change, when to change the mood, when to switch up, when to get faster, you know, when can you take a chance and be softer, is the maturity, I think, of being a DJ. You don't saw, you just don't go, oh, they like this, and I'm going to play 50 records of this type. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's easy, that's too easy. Yeah. You go to a record store and buy 20 CDs and you're set, you know. Um, but to take the challenge, you know, and my optimism or being positive is I'm assuming there was maybe 10 people on the side of the side and maybe five people behind the speaker back there who I don't know but you know what they probably had a good time and those five or 10 or 15 people will be at the next gig I have we know we do Huh? We had a good time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Good time. But, but you know, right next to the booth, listen. Yes. Back. Yes. You know, you you win them over. You take the challenge, and and that's the thing. You must always take the challenge. Yeah. You have a responsibility. If you have a, a name or a big name, they're spending yeah. crazy money for you. Have a responsibility to yeah. spread the religion, spread the word. <laughs> you have to, or else you shouldn't be in it. Yeah. You shouldn't be in it. You, know, you don't just take the job and the money and run because you don't stay a long time. Yeah. You don't. There's too much competition, man. It's crazy, you know. And I always use the big, real artist as an example, you know. I say, well, what does Janet Jackson do? What does, you know, Madonna do? What does this one do? What do you do? I mean, how do they stay there? How do they have 20 albums? How do they stay around for 15, 20 years? You use them as a, as a model, you know. That's what I use all the time. That's, that's an example. Sure. 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 Just like, again, I hate to keep saying it, like religion, you know, people say, well, you know, why would God have, you know, why me, why you let my sister pass away or some craziness, yeah. you know, now I don't believe anymore, well, yeah. it's challenging, it's challenging sometimes, yeah. but you have to stay with it, you know, and keep your beliefs up, you know, you have to, don't let anybody take that away from you or you should quit. A lot of times I thought about quitting, you know, before I had the record label, uh, five, six years ago, you think, uh, nobody's into this music anymore, you know, it's all this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. That is just bad talk, mm -hmm. and I refuse to listen to it anymore, because I can remember every year, every year, someone says, House music, dance music, vocal songs, oh it sucks, it's not happening no more, you know, this is happening, techno's happening, yeah. hip hop's happening, and you know what, you speak to people in techno and hard house and they're saying the same thing, oh yeah. it's not happening anymore, you know, so we happen to find out more about the business, it doesn't mean it's going anywhere. Yeah. I don't believe it. People say, let's go to Miami, let's go to Ibiza, it's not yeah. happening anymore. It's funny, they got more people in Ibiza, yeah. yeah. more people they keep in going, Florida yes. than you ever had before. Yeah. So, the lesson of the day to me is don't listen to negative talk because there's mm -hmm. no proof there. Yeah. For, all the for all the business that, the red companies that close, 
and all that. You look at the list of, of parties that they're having in Miami this year, it is double what it was last uh, yeah. year. So you know what? We all can't be stupid or crazy. Yeah. Somebody's making money somewhere. Yeah. In house music or dance music, somebody's making money. Yeah. We're not, we're not all stupid. Fifty of us are not stupid. Yeah. The ones that don't talk are the ones that are making money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Correct? Yeah. So just don't get caught in a bad group of people with negative talk because, yeah. you know, you go down while they make the money. It makes no sense yeah. to me. You're not old. You're not, it's not over. I think the music business today is the same as it was yeah. 10, 20, 30 years ago. The only difference is you and I happen to know more about it. Yeah. We know more about the club business. Yeah. We know about the, the promotion. We know yeah. more about whatever the names yeah. Yeah. you know more about the money that it costs yeah. so what we know more but it hasn't changed yeah. what's di what, what's different about it yeah. more zeros i mean <laughs> what? what but it's the same thing they were yeah. complaining the people who you know made the, music. made the music there were so many bands that were complaining why they didn't make it same thing, same thing. You read books, you do your homework, same complaints there are today. The same thing.